Hey everyone, um, hope you guys had a good week. I can't believe we're already hitting the last week of Lent. I can't believe we're hitting Holy Week. And for those of you who are watching, it's Palm Sunday. Normally at church, we're used to being at Mass together, waving palms around, and let's be honest, also making those little crosses with them. But life looks differently right now, doesn't it? There's a lot going on um, that has kind of flipped our lives upside down and we can't do what we would normally do this season. But that doesn't mean we can't get the most out of Palm Sunday. That doesn't mean we can't get the most out of Holy Week. And in this video, Joe Spars is going to help us understand that. Help us understand the, the extent in which Christ went out of love for us. That we can take all of the suffering, especially with everything that's going on, and lay it at the foot of the cross because there's no one who understands suffering the way Christ does. So, we hope this video can, can help you dive in a little deeper for Holy Week. We hope that you and your family are doing well, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, I give you Joe Esparza and, and his thoughts on Holy Week. And uh, we hope to see you guys soon. God bless. What's going on, everyone? It's Joseph. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, you know, if you're like me, the last few weeks, and especially the last few days, have been pretty hard to keep track of in terms of like what day of the week it is, right? So last month, think about it. We were just starting to enter Lent. We were kind of talking about what we would be giving up for Lent, and everything seemed totally normal. Yet, here we are, about a month later, and schools are closed. Uh, the whole country is pretty much on lockdown, and our churches are empty. And in many ways, this new reality seems to be just getting started. Our lives forever are going to be changed now by the era of the coronavirus. It's something we're going to remember forever. Now, listen to me. We don't need to be afraid of this time, though. There's lots of uncertainty, but we need to remember that this week is Holy Week, which is, if you remember, is when we as Catholics relive the final days of Christ's love before he died on Good Friday. Jesus died on the cross, and the cross doesn't end, though, with death. Remember, it is a way to redeeming hope of a life on Easter Sunday. That's not to say the road to get to Easter Sunday is easy. It's not. That road is full of suffering and of pain, but it's pain that is given with love, and it's totally worth it. Now listen, Holy Week this year is an opportunity for us unlike any other. It's an extraordinary opportunity. Now, while I think we all wish we could return to our normal lives and come back together at our parish and celebrate the mysteries of Easter um, together, have our family events, all that good stuff, unlike any other Easter time before, or hopefully one that we will ever have again, this is an opportunity for us to, to radically understand the depths of Christ's love for us and the suffering that he endured for us in a very unique way, very special way, right? By understanding this, I think we can come up to have a fuller joy of the fulfillment of hope that comes on Easter Sunday. You see, all of us suffer. That's a fact of living in a broken world, and we know that. Our choice is whether we will suffer with Christ and share his cross willingly or not. The coronavirus, for example, has brought human suffering. Remember, Christ is not only God, uh, but he's also human. It's something that I think I forget sometimes, right? Sometimes I think of Jesus as some kind of Thor-like character. But no, no, we need to take a step back and realize that every pain, every fear, every uncertainty, every unfulfilled desire, Jesus understands on a deeply personal human level. He felt all of it himself. And as we prepare for this week, I think it's important to think about the different kinds of suffering that there are and how we can relate to them in special ways this year. So let's, let's think about them, right? There are really three types of suffering. The first kind is a physical or a bodily suffering. And an example of this would be like the coronavirus, right? Uh, cancer, illness, um, sickness, you know, you broke your ankle, sprained your ankle, whatever, right? Just being in chronic pain, those are examples of bodily suffering. Next we have like a deep psychological suffering of our mind, anxiety, fear, 
loss, guilt, depression. In these uncertain times, I think all of us can relate to some psychological suffering on some way, at least with the uncertainty in our country and our communities. Now, the third kind of suffering is a spiritual suffering of our soul. It's a suffering when we lack the sense of purpose and the ways that we can fulfill our purpose. And that's, they're all, all very deep, very real sufferings that Christ endured. Now, we need to realize also, though, that Christ fulfills the meaning of suffering. As Jesus prepared to die for our sins and show us his love, he willingly took suffering to its human limits. For bodily suffering, the pain that he went through in the agony of the garden when he sweat blood, the scourging at the pillar when his flesh was literally teared from his body, lash by lash by the whip, the carrying of the cross and when he fell on his face with the weight of a hundred pound cross beam on his back, and finally being nailed to the cross, Jesus understands f physical suffering. Psychologically, Christ understands that as well. Uncertainty, anxiety. Remember, the agony in the garden. Christ was so afraid. He was so worried for what would come. And the, the souls who would abandon him, that he sweat blood. Right? All of his friends abandoned him. He went through most of his entire passion alone. Right? And now on a spiritual level, Jesus cried out from the cross, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Well, we know God will not abandon us. It certainly feels like sometimes he can. I mean, Jesus certainly thought so when he said that on the cross. So Jesus expects us, we feel all these kinds of sufferings, right? And who are we to expect that we won't have suffering in our life? Christ came to make sense of the suffering, essentially to give it a meaning. Its meaning is to realize how much we need his love. Uh, really because of our own weakness, because of our own insignificance. It makes us holier. Suffering makes us more virtuous. Suffering makes us stronger and more mature in our faith as young Christians. Whoever does not pick up his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Those are the words of our Lord. Suffering is a requirement of the job as a Christian. Who are we to expect anything less than what the Son of God went through by being nailed and hanging from a wooden beam. Right? Now here's the good news. Christ gives our suffering purpose. This is what the Catholic Church calls redemptive suffering. What is the purpose of suffering then? It is that the hope of a new, redeemed, eternal life and the fulfillment of purpose in Him may be had. Right? This, that is essentially what Easter Sunday is all about. New life, fulfilled purpose new hope. However, we can't get to Easter Sunday except through the pain, the agony, the sorrow of Good Friday. So, in this time of the world, in this time in our communities, in our parishes, in this time of the coronavirus era, we can relate to Jesus' own passion in a very radical way, both on a bodily, a mental, and a spiritual level. This time of the virus reminds us of the weakness of our bodies, it reminds us the uncertainties uh, that it of our mind, what times cause our mind, and of course, our spiritual need needs uh, can't be fully fulfilled right now, right? Because our churches are closed. So as you see, we are radically suffering, in a sense, to the extent that the world can right now, right? In in a certain sense, we're suffering in all the ways that Christ did. So here's what I would say to you. This Holy Week is a time to remember the redemptive power of suffering. This is our time to remember that our home and our purpose is not of this world. I think the coronavirus and the sickness, the pain, the uncertainty, everything that it has caused makes that abundantly clear. So here's what. Here's an invitation to unite our sufferings to the power of the cross. Let's choose to suffer with Christ, not without him. Because remember, the glory of Easter is coming. Have a good Holy Week, guys, and hope to see you next week. Stay safe.